Hello. So look, what you guys don't know is that you stepped into a room where we started the day talking about emotions. So I'm going to start, before I even get started, I want to just say, how are you? Fabulous. Much better now that I'm here. I feel like I'm feeling the energy. I'm absorbing it in. It's very exciting. I love that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel like I haven't been in an in-person event in a long, long time, so this is nice to be sort of here today and talking about topics that we really enjoy. So, Well, thank you so much for being here. I said earlier, um, a huge thank you to the Tapestry team for your support of Harlem's Fashion Row. I know we've got some other exciting initiatives to do as well, so we're, we're very excited and I cannot wait to get into this. So why don't we just start by saying, talking about your title and what your responsibility is at Tapestry and Coach Reloved. Absolutely. Um, I'll start us off. Um, I'm Rose Oliva. So I lead the design team for Coach Reloved, which is a program that is almost a year old. We're approaching our anniversary on Earth Day this week. Um, and I'll talk to you a little more about the program in a bit, but it's this new initiative for Coach to really engage our brand in circular fashion um, and bring ourselves into that space. And what she has not, she will tell us about all the fabulous products with Coach Reloved. But if you have not checked out that website, please do. Because, look, don't have your credit card anywhere near because you're going to start <laughs> shopping. It's so, like, what you created is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank so you. beautiful. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I'm Logan Duran, and I lead environmental social governance and sustainability for Tapestry. So all three of our brands, Coach, Kate Spade, and Stuart Weitzman. And it's fairly all-encompassing. We're looking at, you know, uh, product marketing claim substantiation, preferred materials, supplier engagement, working with our suppliers on uh, how to basically measure and reduce environmental impact across the entire supply chain. Big job. Big job. <laughs> yeah, there's some work to do, but we're, Incredible. we're, getting, at it. we're getting at it. Incredible. So we've always heard of the three R's, right? Which is reduce, reuse, and recycle. We've heard that as children. How is Tapestry incorporating um, this principle into the development of products? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're trying to take a fairly comprehensive approach in looking at which are where impact sits across the entire value chain. So looking at environmentally preferred materials, how we design product, how we you know, work with different suppliers on measuring their environmental impact, and really setting targets and ambitions to you know, ultimately reduce energy and emissions uh, at our supplier level, but also at our stores and offices. Uh, and then obviously finding ways to um, identify waste in the supply chain. And so w one of those initiatives, which you may have seen a little of, is this, organiz or this program called Uploven, uh, where we're basically taking scrap uh, leather material uh, and effectively sort of stripping it and weaving it together in panels mm -hmm. uh, and basically taking what would have landed on the cutting room floor and finding ways to to really reduce it, reuse it, uh, and ultimately reduce the amount of waste that's going to landfill. And so, uh, I think to date, it's been around you know three thousand pounds of leather scrap that's been turned into this upwoven material, which equates to around you know seven hundred yards of fabric or you know seven football fields, as we like to get into the equivalencies in the sustainability wow. space, just to help people. I know Megan threw out that sort of massive number, just to help you sort of contextualize the size of the the challenge that we're, that we're working on. And then, you know, I, I may actually sort of add in and sort of kick it over to Rose, but we also like to say reduce, reuse, recycle, and then repair. And I mm. think that's a big piece of, of this opportunity. And I know Megan spoke about the need to repair, but really, you know, keeping products in play, and we've done some, some studies at our, own, uh, at our own facilities on on what's the actual reduction in environmental impact when you just keep a product in use longer, mm. uh, and repairing it is, is a really good way to do that. Love that. Absolutely. And repair is so important, I think, to um, especially the coach brand. Um, we actually have this really cool um, warehouse. Um, it's a workshop of craftspeople that are out in New Jersey that will repair a coach bag from any point in our 80 year history. Wow. Did you guys time. know that? Fun Take fact. your coach bags to New Jersey to get them repaired. <laughs> Look as good as new. <laughs> wow. Um, that's fantastic because I can tell you, I have. Two handbags at the top of my closet right now that's just been sitting there that need to be, you know, that need to be repaired. So that is a really big piece of it. Um, Coach, I know, launched is Coach Relove program, which I personally love. Um, and it allows customers to actually trade in 
their coach their coach product for credit, right? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it totally kind of doubles back to the first question about all the R's. Um, so Coach We Loved, it started as um, us kind of confronting a problem with the lives of products. Uh, fashion, but really any product, which is linear. So materials are harvested, the item is made, it's, the item is sold, the owner has it, and then they end their time with it. It breaks, they're done with it, whatever reason, they don't want it anymore, and it goes in a landfill. So it's a straight line. And what we seek to do with um, the Reloved program is create more of a circle. So when coach customers have their bag and they're done with it, they can get it repaired with us a few times, but when they've decided they're gonna move on to their next bag, as we all do sometimes, they can do this take back program that we have where we'll give them um, a store credit so they can go out and buy themselves something else nice. But then we get the bag. I actually specifically get the bag over in our uh, New Jersey office. Um, and what we do is we assess the product that we get back. And we get a lot of stuff back. It's pretty incredible. It's really fun. I want to see a picture of that room. Oh my gosh. Just imagine 2001 <laughs> like all over again. Wow. That's, that's a pretty good idea of our workspace. A lot of signature. Okay. Um, but it's really fun. Uh, so the, the product is kind of in a range of states of repair. So we have some stuff that's like kind of amazing, maybe worn once. That type of stuff we'll just art, we'll um, hand over to our craftspeople. They like touch it up, and we actually resell it as is in a restored state. Um, some of it's like a little bit more damaged. Something's like noticeably broken on it. That comes to me and my team, and we kind of assess the product and we design kind of a beautiful solution for it. That's one of a kind for that bag in front of us, but makes it even more special than it was originally. Um, and that's our Uffcrafted program. And then we have other bags that are just like so heavily used. Like I love those bags, but they have just worked so hard for their first owner. And we can't That's like, such a great way to put it. <laughs> bags work hard, we don't even get paid. And <laughs> these bags, so we still have a use for them. We dissemble them into flat pieces of leather and then we take the usable pieces and we cut them into like little small leather goods and small precious objects for our remade program. So. Basically, there is nothing that is waste. We can use every bag. Like there is gonna be another purpose for it in our circle. And our idea is that once the next person buys it, they'll bring it back to us and it just stays alive. So product always has a place. Um, when we were concepting this, one of the things that, I, this inspires me all the time, my eight years working at Coach, I love how everybody has um, a memory associated with their first coach bag, or most people do. Mm -hmm. I certainly have one, but people get them from their mom. They bought a bag for a job interview. Maybe they bought a $25 wristlet at the outlet because they just wanted mm -hmm. something. But everyone, a lot of people have like a memory associated with it, and I think those memories are so beautiful. They're so personal. Um, and when you hold a bag in the repair shop, you feel it, like it's embedded mm. in that product, the memory, and like, the, quite frankly, the love. Mm. So that's really what Reloved is I about. I feel like you can feel the love in a product too. Yeah. I, I really believe in that. I yes. subscribe to that. Oh, I'm glad you feel that <laughs> way. Yeah, like I always feel like I love the memory that's embedded even in clothing. Mm -hmm. For Coach, we're doing bags, but it's really in everything we own and like these experiences we've had in places these uh, products have gone with us. So we like to kind of, acknowledge that love that the product has had, even if it's damaged, and then I take my turn to love it. The craft people make it beautiful, they love it, and then the next owner will love it. So we really strive to like engage our customers in our community in like learning to love this product and seeing the value in it, um, and like the richness of secondhand, frankly, um, and also realizing that they shouldn't be throwing their stuff out. They can mm. bring it back to us, and we will give it another chance. And can the consumer take it to any coach store? Just How about. does it work? Um, we or do you have to mail it in or? Yeah, we're actually, we're slowly expanding. It's an in-store okay. experience currently. Um, okay. We're just in North America, but yes, you can bring it into a coach store and one of the um, store associates will look at it and like evaluate for it for you. Okay, and then they get the credit from the store? Yes. Order to have, okay. That oh, that's is right. awesome. Yeah. So right on the spot. Absolutely. The one piece I love on the Coach Reloved is the um, coasters. They're leather coasters. So beautiful. Didn't know you need them until you see them, yeah, right? Yeah, and, <laughs> and the 3D puzzles, too, because those make really great art pieces. They are really so. quite fabulous, and those are made from deconstructed bags. So in one set of coasters, you're actually 
getting about eight different coach bags. It's kind of wild, but they're all people's different bags. It's, it's really mind blowing. Wow, I love that. I told you y'all were gonna wanna shop. <laughs> Uh, now, Tapestry has taken the initiative to use more environmentally preferred materials. What materials would you say work best for developing products? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're definitely looking at sort of materials across the board, right? We obviously uh, sort of coach Original House of Leather. We do a lot of leather, and so we're really trying to look at the entire supply chain of leather and looking at, you know, traceability. We're looking at how uh, leather is made and working uh, with the Leather Working Group, which is basically a, a, a third-party certification that evaluates tanneries and sort of how they operate and ranks them gold, silver, bronze. And so we've set a commitment to basically have 90% uh, of our leather coming from Leather Working Group gold and silver tanneries. And, and right now we're around 60%. But obviously on a leather, on a, on a coach product or a case made product, there's more than just leather, right? So we're looking at polyester, we're looking at cotton, we're looking at nylon, and, and just trying to evaluate and find ways to really introduce more environmentally preferred materials, as well as you know, finding ways to communicate that to the customer. Because ultimately, as, you know, as we've talked a little bit about before, you know, every single aspect of the, of the product has an impact, and really we're just trying to find ways to reduce that impact. And when we've done our own studies on looking at where uh, impact in the product sits, Ultimately, it's with that material selection. And that material choice at the very beginning is ultimately where the majority of the environmental impact sits. And so it's a good way for us to use design, but also product development to find ways to reduce impact over, over the life of a product. Yeah, one of the other um, kind of interesting resources and materials that we use in Reloved that you don't think about it as being important, but it really is, is we actually use waste from our company or something that we used to consider waste. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're doing our upcrafted bags, we've tasked ourselves with only using things that exist. We're like, what if we could do this without bringing any new materials in um, to the, this? We have like all this stuff in front of us that was getting, you know, so we have things um, as a designer that are getting... You have it at one point when you're developing something and then you might need to toss it like a, a strike off of a print on a piece of silk or like a leather skin of a new article of leather. There's all these things we've got around the office. Um, and so we only use that stuff when we upcraft. We don't want to bring anything new into the world because when you kind of start to have that perspective when you're designing that you've got to use what's in front of you, you come up with some very creative things yeah. um, and really one of a kind things. So it's turned into a really great way um, for other teams at Coach to kind of give their stuff to us. It's almost like a, some sort of way to manage what they're getting rid of because we can use it and make it very right. special. So, I love the restriction. Like I always feel like if you put somebody in a place and you say you can't go outside these walls, it's insane. Even when we're thinking about designers of color, I say to people, the reason they're so amazing and so creative and so innovative is because they've had to work with limited resources. They've had to work with you know, uh, limited teams. But because of that, what you see is so much innovation coming out of this community. So I love the idea of just restriction and creativity coming from that. Um, what sustainable approaches has Tapestry used to develop in-store shopping? Yeah, so in stores, we've taken, we've tried to take a fairly comprehensive approach. And similar to the way we design product, we, we've taken that same approach with how we design visual merchandising and fixtures, right? So looking at preferred materials, looking at what the opportunity is for reuse or recycling. Uh, we actually had a, a our, our visual merchandising team last year, we ended up recycling around 580 tons of sort of excess or, or leftover fixtures that we that we were sort of phasing out of, of some of our stores. Give us an equivalent, 580 tons, I can't that's even, what is that's that? That's a lot, that's a lot. I also <laughs> wanna make sure, yeah, that's a lot. I mean, as far wow. as equivalence goes, um, it's definitely, you know, because you think about sort of stores as they turn over, there's, there's material. And so right. in that approach, yes, we found a solution for that problem, but now the challenge, again, I think comes back to sort of setting up those constraints to say, Let's get to a point where we don't have to do that in the future. But can we design sort of things with durability, longevity, uh, sort of timeless things that are sort of season over season that are, are going to be used? Um, additionally, you know, we've committed to 100% renewable energy in all of our own operations. And so we currently run 20% uh, of our 
uh, electricity usage is from renewable energy right now with the goal of 100% by 2025. Uh, but we also look at packaging. And, and right now, our packaging in stores is anywhere from 40% to 90% to recycled content. And we're trying to find ways when we're looking at things like shoe boxes. If you make the shoe box just a little bit thinner, you're also reducing the amount of paper that goes into that shoe box and ultimately reducing impact and reducing waste. So uh, we've tried to take sort of these different approaches both from a, a product and material perspective, but then also from a, a customer experience perspective. So we've actually transitioned sort of those little care cards that you get, those little booklets, which are, you know, the wrong size paper and there's always lots of wastage. We've actually switched that to a QR code. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually need it anymore, right? Because we're so accustomed to QR codes now. Uh, and then additionally, on the actual sort of engagement with the customer, we're, we offer, you know, leather care in store, uh, as well as repair services. Mm -hmm. And so trying to really, continue to engage with customers throughout the life of that product and, and as well as sort of finding ways to, to continue to sort of measure and reduce environmental impact. So oh, good. I love that. I um, read something the other day on LinkedIn from a brand where they were shipping two shoe boxes, the shoe box and then the box for the shoe box, and they eliminated the box for the shoe box and let the shoe, look, I know I sound like I'm doing a riddle right now, <laughs> but allow the shoe box to be like the box and I was like, wow, like that's such an easy solution. You know, they've yeah. literally cut their usage of all this cardboard by half. Yeah, and I mean, we, we, you see the other examples where basically folks have put a string on the shoe box. So instead of taking a shoe box and putting it in a bag and walking out of the store, they're basically just adding the string to the shoe box. So now you just have to carry that, which is also, also a pretty interesting opportunity. But again, I think this idea of constraints, right? Mm -hmm. And really defining the design problem yep. allows us to, to find some pretty awesome and innovative solutions to, to some of the challenges that we're looking at from an environmental perspective. Awesome. And if you have any of that extra fabric, let me tell you who can use it. HBCU fashion departments. Nice. So let us know. Yes. <laughs> Look, I see the hands because that would be awesome. And Tapestry is actually partnering with us with an HBCU in the fall, and so maybe we can take some of that fabric and see what oh, the yeah. students can do with it, right? For sure. Oh, awesome. Um, so we can clap for that. I wanna clap. <laughs> <laughs> now I know Tapestry's goal has been to support the planet. What significant differences have you seen since taking a sustainable approach? Mm. A lot, I would say. Um, one of the biggest ones for me has been culture shift, um, both from customers and from within the company, mm -hmm. because that's such a huge part of sustainability, in my opinion, is like getting people to think differently right. and see the things around them differently. Um, and in relation to Reloved, when we started out, a lot of people didn't get what we were doing. Um, people associate secondhand with like Goodwill or something, they're not, they weren't fully getting there, and they didn't understand what we were doing to the bags or where they were coming from, but we just, kept pushing, you know, we just keep saying what it is, getting the information out there, scaling, and just making our story heard loud and clear as to what we're doing and the good it's doing. And people start to hear it and listen as customers engage. They buy the product and now they know what it's about and they're a spokesperson of it. Um, and we start to get people educated within our company as well and learning about this. And I mean, getting stuff from all these teams who give all these little goodies that they're throwing out to us. It's so exciting. <laughs> and I love it. It really makes me realize that people get the good that we're doing um, and are making changes in themselves. And that's how we really see change. Yeah. I, I mean, I would echo that, that I think it's, you know, it very much feels like an all hands on deck. I think when we see the science come out from IPCC or when we see sort of various news reports, like there are some real challenges that we're going to face as, as a society. Mm -hmm. And so, it definitely feels like all hands on deck within, within Tapestry on how to both measure, run a profitable business, but also do it with as limited environmental impact as possible. And so we see you know, all areas of the business uh, are, are coming together to find ways to you know, you know, reduce our impact from it when it comes to carbon emissions in our, in our products, looking at preferred materials, or, or even you know, within our own stores and our own operations. Awesome, awesome. Now, I will tell you for, it doesn't hurt when something is recycled and then it's really beautiful. And I think what you've done is you've taken the opportunity to say, we've got this really great quality leather. How do we turn that into something that could actually be artwork on someone's coffee table or, 
you know, that can be something that people use every day. So you've done an incredible job. You, you, this is the designer, guys, Rose, for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. so we're going to give Rose all her. Guys. We're going to give Rose her props, <laughs> okay? Thank you. Oh, um, so kind. So what advice do you, can you give designers and entrepreneurs who are looking to take a more sustainable approach in their um, designs and also in their business? It's definitely a big issue. It's certainly a relevant one. Um, I feel sometimes that when I think about sustainability, it's like a monster. It's, it's crazy because if you start looking at all the tough things going on in the world, the things that need fixing, it's overwhelming. I one time was at a party and I was just started crying talk to, talking to someone about microplastics in the ocean. It's just so upsetting. So I, my advice would definitely be um, look at all the parts of sustainability. I always think of the UN's SDGs. Um, they're the, like these things that are really important to focus on when we're like thinking about sustainability. Like there's kind of obvious things like land on, um, like taking care of the land, taking care of the ocean, uh, taking care of our climate. But then there's things like uh, education for all and ending poverty and gender equality. So there's so many facets to this shape that is sustainability. And I think, since it can feel overwhelming, it's good to start with something that designers feel passionate about. Start with the thing that you feel like you can make change in, and that's where you start taking your first steps. And then eventually you will start touching the other parts of it, and you will grow and become more effective. But starting one place and focusing there, Absolutely. I think, is helpful. Otherwise, you become totally overwhelmed. Absolutely. <laughs> Completely overrun. You want to add to this? I don't think I need to. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Logan. Well, thank you so much, Logan. And thank you so much, Rose, for being with us. And again, thank you to the Tapestry team. So please give them thank a you. huge hand of applause for me.